Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2020 Topps Archives Baseball. Full case, 10 box case break. Pick your team number four from jazbeescasebreaks.com. No fillers or anything. We, we just knocked this out straight up, so I appreciate that. All card ship. There is that weird variation where Tatis, Paddock, or it says Washington and the National League on their cards, and then the Scherzer says San Diego. But those variations will obviously go to their current team. Tatis, Paddock, Padres, and then... Scherzer will go to the Nationals. Um, <clears throat> what else? Lots of other fun stuff in here. Two autographs per box. There's a mini poster in each box as well. So let's get to it. Kind of a long break, so uh, <clears throat> get settled in. And kick back and relax. Big thanks, everybody, right here. Thanks for your patience on this break. We finally got it done. I know it's been sitting on the site for a little bit, but we finally got it done. Jeremy Anderson, Last Spot Mojo Cardinals. Thanks everybody for getting in, really appreciate it. Here's the 10 boxes, 10 boxes, 24 packs in each box, right there. And let's pop this baby open. Now remember, since all cards ship and we're trying to pull as many variations as possible, give the shipping team an extra day or two uh, than what you normally would expect from us to, uh, to sort and ship this all out. It's gonna take a little extra time. Because I'm not going to be able to catch every single variation except for some of the real obvious ones. There's five boxes over here and there's five boxes over here. And the rest of them we pretty much have to look at the codes on the back. In fact, I'm going to flip screens for just a second here. Right? So I don't know if I'm ever going to remember what, what's, what's though. That's the base and him hitting is the variation. I don't know. But those codes on the bottom right there are what we're going to look at for the variations. So we'll be able to we'll we'll be able to catch all card ship anyway. There's ones with blank names on the front. I guess I should be able to spot those pretty easily. The black and white ones I should be able to spot. But, you know, there's that San Diego Washington one right there. So here's a bunch of photo examples. I'm not, I can't look at the back of every single card. We'll we'll find the back image variation ones right here. Right? More of a close-up shot right here in a white background. So Link that the link to that page. I'll drop that again in the chat. So check that out. There you go. Archives. Twenty twenty two on card autos per box on average. Pretty solid set. If you're a set builder, you're gonna love this. I know there's some of you still out there, set builders, variation hunters. There you go. There's Aaron Judge. I do love these posters. They're just kind of thin posters, so they already have a big crease in them. Sometimes during the shipping, they kind of those get banged up there, but <clears throat> those will obviously ship to you. Yankees, that'll go to Aaron Tooley with that one. All right, let's do a quick roll call. Who's here and what, what, what team do you have? Is there anything specific you're looking for? There's Garza, what's up Garza? He's got my Dodgers, I see you there. Good luck. Bryce loves sets. He's building sets. Royals for Gilo, nice. Matthew Stubblefield just wants to see some fire. Bryce, you have the Cubs too. Yeah, you're looking for Cubs. Ryan Sandberg maybe. Richard S has the Rockies. There's Jeremy Anderson, last bought Mojo with STL. We got a good crew here for. I feel like we'll have a lot of spectators because the the last Lakers game just wrapped up. Are my Dodgers still playing? I mean, I've been so locked into NBA playoffs. They are. Bottom of the seventh, they have the bases loaded. Oh, nice. Let's flip over to the Dodge Network. I do not want do not want to see local local sports news recaps. Alright, there we go. Not the sounds of baseball on in the background. Most games are finals. Cardinals shut out the Reds in St. Louis, three to nothing. Orioles edged out the Red Sox, five to four. Red Sox haven't even won ten games yet. Braves beat the Phillies, six five. I think that went down to the wire too in the eighth or ninth inning. Indians beat the uh, Tigers, six one. Twins beat the Royals in Kansas City, seven to two. Rays in Tampa Bay ed edged out the Blue Jays, two one. Angels edged out the A's in Oakland, four to three. Pirates pounding the Brew Crew. 12 to 5. 
in a makeup of an old game. This is the second game, I guess. Marlins beat the uh, Nationals 5-3, to three, and then Nationals beat the Marlins 5-4 to four in the first game. Um, current games, we got Diamondbacks at Giants, tied at 1. Giants with the bases loaded in the bottom of the 7th. Mariners up 8-1 on the Rangers in Seattle, bottom of the 7th. Padres hit another Grand Slam today, apparently. They're up 11-2 on the hated Astros, the cheating ones. Bottom of the seventh. I think I think the Padres are going to be cruising in that game. Bottom of the seventh. With the Rockies up 3-2, Dodgers have the bases loaded. No outs. Bases loaded, no outs. Chris Taylor takes a strike. And then the other game is White Sox leading the Cubbies 5-3 in the top of the ninth in the north side. So Cubs will be getting the last frame there. So there you go. And that's your quick baseball score update on August the 20, Saturday, August 22nd, 2020. And no, not a double play. Damn it. They tie the game, but double play. All right. Here we go. Joe Cavanaugh, what's going on? How are you? Yeah, they do have a checklist. Cardboardconnection.com has a checklist. Groupratechecklist.com will have checklist for this set. So just in the interest of time, we're going to kind of breeze through this as quickly uh, in a relatively speedy sort of way. Tyler Brand is looking for Jim Tomes. I'm not, I am playing fantasy sports, Gilo. McKenzie debut. Oh, Tristan McKenzie made his debut. Yeah, I heard he was pretty good. Let's try to save some of those rookies right here, too. I like the, the this TV set look here. Pat Lynch, yeah. Lake, Lakers beat the uh, Trailblazers today. There's Jason. What's going on? Padre sleeper for the playoffs, yeah, they're 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 looking pretty good too. Max Muncie up to bat, and we've got a Rowdy Tellez, seventy six out of ninety nine. Jose Obreu playing some good baseball, the White Sox playing some good baseball. Walker Bueller had a pretty excellent start. 11 strikeouts in his last start was pretty good. And a redemption. Any guesses on that redemption? Yeah, I'm doing terrible in baseball this year, but it almost kind of doesn't. I mean, I love baseball, uh, and I'm, I'm happy to watch it, but I'm not getting too, too deep into it. You know, where's my... Yeah, Luis Roberts been playing well. He's been doing a good job. Yeah. Another grand slam for the Padres. That's crazy. Oh, you're guessing Luis Robert. Jeremy's guessing. Oh, that's right. I asked you. I was like, why are people naming random players? I'm going to do football this year. There's the second autograph. Darren Erstad. Classic Angel for Ryan H. I'll play fantasy football this year, but I think that, that that should feel, hopefully it'll feel more normal, I think. No fans will be kind of, or limited fans will make kind of home field advantages maybe very different, which I think could be a unique thing. Nick and I usually do like a big, those big casino contests. Or you pay like a zillion dollars and then you play the entire season and blah, 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 blah. I think we're passing this season on that just because I think there just might be too much variance that we can't really keep track of. So these are facsimile autographs, by the way. So I don't know if we're, we're going to do that, but... There's that no-name front right there.
Well, if you didn't say anything, Tyler, I might have been inspired too, but no. No break credit, just bragging rights. That's has to come from the goodness of my heart, not because people ask. 1960, Topps Rookie All-Stars, Autograph Variation Silver. You know what I love about these uh, Topps Redemptions now? Is that they put their team name on there. So let's see if we can spot it. B, Boston, Baltimore. There's only two B teams. Ba Baltimore, that's definitely Baltimore. It's John Means for the Orioles. I don't even have to mark mark up these redemptions anymore. All right, so Orioles, Chris Miller. No, sorry, Jeff S. with the O's. Their names are right next to each other. All right, and of course, we'll do a autograph recap and other maybe like low numbered parallels if we find anything like 25 and under or whatever. Low numbered parallels and stuff like that, we will also recap at the end of the break. There's Thor for the Mets, and they'll be for Armando. Those would be like fun to, I don't know, fun, fun to frame, maybe. Darren Erstad was a punter for Nebraska? I didn't realize that. For how many years? Now let's go Jock Peterson. Still two outs for the Dodgers. Men on first and third. Gets walked. Bases loaded again. Two outs. Bottom of the seventh. Rockies Dodgers tied at three. Are you, are you saying Jose Abreu hit a third homer tonight? And that White Sox team... If they're ahead of schedule, that's 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 a scary team right there. Austin Barnes takes a strike. through a 96 mile per hour fastball. That was the pitch. Now it's 0-2. Got to watch out for maybe a, an intentional ball or something like that. You got a, maybe a wide pitch, a low pitch. Careful, yep, way outside. Austin Barnes not chasing. Now it's one and two. You can Rockies could still throw away another pitch. See if they can catch Barnes swinging. Swinging at a bad pitch. Oh, that was right in there. Or you can freeze him. There's Jose Abreu right here. Right, well, tie to three. And a Chipper Jones, 12 out of 75, looks nice. Braves, Chris Miller with the chip off the old block. And there's Jose Offerman. Boston Red Sox, that's gonna be for Jeff S. 
Trent Grisham hit his third homer of the night. Man. Rockies have been playing some good baseball, although they're only 13 and 13, but they started the season hot. Padres are 16 and 12 and just, just hitting dingers left and right. As a Dodger fan, <laughs> Padres make me nervous. Because you know, you, you know it wasn't going to be forever. The Dodgers just cruising to NL West victories left each year. That wasn't going to last forever. <laughs> At some point, those teams are going to get good. Out of 175, there's Abraham Toro. Another Jordan Alvarez. Both Astros going to Matt DeLeo. Yeah, card felt different on the back. There you go. Felix Jose. It's a great autograph. Cardinals. Last spot mojo. Jeremy Anderson. Well, yeah, that bullpen doesn't matter, though, Mark. <laughs> if they keep scoring 13, 14 runs a night, hitting grand slams every night, you know, this guy rocking. Oh, yeah, Kirby Yates going down was was definitely a blow. There's a Nico Horner rookie for the Cubs. Is that just a mistake then? Wait, hold on. What what did I thought I saw this card on here? Oh, the base Justin Upton card is not a variation. They're all like this. Tops only lists Angels as a full team rather than Los Angeles Angels, so that's why City info is missing. Maybe an, an Excel error when they were uploading the info. All card ships, you'll, you'll still get that. There's the Luis Robert. I like that Luis Robert in the uh, in that television. Ryan H. with the White Sox. It says color TV right here. Back in the day when they had to distinguish between <laughs> black and white TV and color TV. It's just the regular Washington one. All right, next box. Yeah, I know. Tatis Jr. was drafted a White Sox. Imagine that lineup. Nice. The Melville Meteor, Mike Trout. But you, you know what's you know what's kind of crazy <laughs> is that uh, is that Tatis Jr. They thought he was going to be a bust. Not a bust, but I mean, he wasn't good enough to, to keep him. It was kind of crazy. I think he wasn't too impressive like that first year or two. He was still pretty young, but I think that's what I remember, right? That he wasn't super, super impressive, but... And I feel like the White Sox can identify, can, can identify talent. You know, they've developed enough. So I feel like they can identify talent pretty well. Unless it was just one scout. <laughs> this one person's like, we got to trade for Tease. He's going to be garbage. I'll bet my job on it. <laughs> oh, Trevor Story just rips one into the gap. up double for Trevor Story. You know what I heard? I heard uh, I heard some people say that Bobby Witt Jr., big royal prospect, like he could be a Trevor Story type. Like that's a comp. I think I saw that I read that on Fangraphs or something like that. Some some writer on Fangraphs made that comp. That'd be crazy. That'd be great for Bobby Witt Jr. Cards. 
Was Glaber a White Sox? Glaber was a Cub, says Mike Power. I think Eloy was a Eloy was a Cub too. That was a Quintana deal, I think. Jose, the Jose Quintana deal, which they probably want to get taken back. They'd probably reverse that if they could. Oh, like he needs to be called. He's Matthew Selby feels like where's where's Wander Franco, and Bryce is like Tampa Bay, and then Matthew Selby feels like no, 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 I know where he is. I mean, like, why isn't he being called up? Yeah, I don't know. I think he's on their like sort of sixty man, wrote like squad. I'm pretty sure, but I don't know if they really have room for him anywhere. Albert Owsley had a great start. Kyle Lewis having a great season. Jorge Polanco to 175. And we've got Bernie Carbo. That's right, Dylan Cease was part of that Quintana deal too. I guess Quintana did help them down the stretch. I think he did perform pretty well. So I think it wasn't entirely terrible, but... There's Bo Bichette. More Jordans. And a red DJ LeMahieu. That's the 75. And it always triggers me. I always think that's like, oh, that's out of five. Reds are out of five. But it's not. But that'll still go to the Yankees. Who has the Bronx Bombers? Aaron Tooley does. It's like an autograph. It is. It's Lonnie Smith. Chris Miller with the Braves. Remember Lonnie Smith? I don't. I think he's a little, a little past my time, but I do kind of associate with him as a Brave, though, to 150. Bryce, are you, are you already asking where certain players are? Where's that Ryan Sandberg? Friend. Ooh, we got we got so much time to go before you start asking. We're we're twenty three minutes into an eighty minute break. We got another like hour to go. No, I made a little less than that, but got a lot of time to go. There's Dylan Cease. All right, next box. There's Blake Snell. He's pretty intense right there. Snellzilla. Does anyone call him that? Snellzilla? We got story in a rundown. Get him. Got him.
That's his Twitch name? It's Snellzilla? Well, that's what it is, Matt, apparently. So he, he calls himself Snellzilla? I mean, that's kind of... <laughs> If you if you self proclaim yourself a nickname, does that does that work? Nicknames are given, right? Given by someone else, not by. Hmm. What are the least original sports nicknames or the worst nicknames? The least original ones, you know, are just when you like our baseball nicknames, where you just kind of add a Y to the end of, end of the name or just shorten someone's name. So Matt Stubblefield, a good baseball nickname. It's Matty S, old Stubby. Stubbs, it's all right, Stubbs. Let's get a hit. You know, it would be like, <laughs> all right, Matty S, let's get a hit, Matty S. Come on, Matty S, attaboy. Good eye, good eye, Matty S, good eye. I've never not been called Stubbs before after meeting someone. Stubbs is it's pretty easy. Stubbs is pretty good. Polar Bear is pretty strong. What do you mean add er to the name, Mike? Snellzill's his his Instagram name? Gilo saying one of the natural the Royals calls them by their first name and it's kind of annoying. How do you mean? Like he's only using their first names? Oh, Sne Sneller, old old Sneller, like Chipper. You just add a Y to everything too, Maddie, Andy, Yuli, Nolany, Robert. There he is. I feel like that's our first one we've seen, aside from that TV one. That goes to Ryan H. and the White Sox. Ryan H., I don't... Have we seen a, a Luis Robert autograph? I, mean, I know it's a small sample size. We've only done three cases at Jaspies. Plus, I guess, whatever personal boxes we did. But I don't think we got a got any out of any of our personal boxes. Hmm. And there's Garrett Anderson, another angel. For Ryan H. and the Halos. Oh, they're all redemptions. I see. Okay. Luis Robert was also redemptions in his first card as well, I'm pretty sure. Bowman draft. Which I think kind of may affect the the secondary market value of those cases. There's Ramon Laureano to 175 in the heart, Ramon. In the heart. We've got to aim for the heart. And there's Tom Pagnazzi. Jeremy Anderson with the Cardinals. Jeremy, what's your favorite Tom Pagnazzi story? He was, he was a catcher with the uh, Cardinals for a long time. He was he was Yachty before Yachty. Except without the Hall of Fame numbers, I don't think. <laughs> I 
Joe Morgan was an Astro? Here's the speedster, Malik Smith, a little mini. For the M's, that'll go to Ryan H. Along with any of the other Kyle Lewis's. Blue Eye that I may have missed. There's there's one right there. I don't think I've seen a base one yet. Huh? I guess these are all kind of base, just different years. Next box. Oh, the Duke of Flatbush. I keep wanting to say brush. It's not a flat brush. Flatbush. The Duke. Duke Snyder. Old Brooklyn Dodger. That'll go to Manuel Garza. Yeah, that Joe Morgan tripped me out. I was just like, I don't think I've ever seen him in an Astros uniform. It's like, is it the same Joe Morgan that played for the Reds? It sure was. Ah, Dodgers tied at three. Top of the order coming up. In the bottom of the ninth. So let's let's see what happens here. Let's go, Dodgers. A lot of Cubs fans were crowing. When the Cubs had the best record in baseball, and now 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 crickets. Now that the Dodgers have first team to twenty wins, hmm, hmm, funny how that works. Stephen Punk, Rex, those are the two main offenders. And they couldn't stop talking about how the Cubs had the best record in baseball, and I was like, crown them. They're going to the World Series. They're winning it. Why even bother playing the rest of these games? I'm not crowing about 20 games in a 60 game season. There's a lot of games to go. No, there's no crowing. It's just, just pointing out fact. Pointing out more of the Cubs fans. Where are they? I don't have to crow. Everyone knows. They look at the standings. Ooh, there you go, Ryan H. You bought 100 PSA 9 to Tease like a month ago? Quantity-wise, you bought 100? Were there 100 available? Wow. There you go. That's 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 a that's a good bit of investing. For about thirty-five bucks a pop, now going for ninety. See, that's sharp right there. That's sharp. All right, next box. Let's find some sharp stuff in here. What do we got? 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 Mookie bets up to bat. Let's go, Mook. Ooh. Oh. Thought it might drop. Flies out to left.
William Hummel th humble brag? No, I think it was a straight up brag. And I would brag too. I would brag too. If I made that move. They were all available. I could have done it. We could have done it. You could have done it. <laughs> we all could have done it. And I would have bragged the same way too. But we didn't. Ryan did. That's why he's sharp. It was Gary Sanchez to 99. For the Yankees, Aaron Tooley. That should be our next autograph. It's Danny Tartable. Oh, man. Gilo, what's your favorite Danny Tartable story? Gilo's a Royals guy. You must have a childhood story about old Danny Tartable. Back in the late 80s, maybe you got his autograph at a car dealership or they did like a little giveaway for him. Old Danny Tartable. Your favorite story is that Gilo was not born yet. But he, you don't have people in in town telling you about oh well I remember when Danny Tartable went and hit 309 and 35 home runs in his first season with the Royals all right so no no Danny Tartable story There's Zach Collins for the White Sox to 175. Matt, what breaks do you think I'll be doing after this break? Well, I mean, I've I've got another 20, 30 minutes to go. Oh, nice Mike Pagliarulo. I, I have no, I have nothing on this guy. Danny Tartable, I actually at least remember the name. I've got nothing on this guy. There he is. Kind of looks like a poor man's Don Mattingly. Uh, that's Kyle Seeger, not Kyle Lewis. Um, I mean, I'm down to uh, I'm down to do some short breaks. I, I usually I started at one o'clock Pacific. I usually ended around nine o'clock Pacific, which is like now. And I still have some time left to go in this one. Uh, another 30, 40 minutes left in this one. So I'm already over, so I'm not sure what I'd... I'd do, I'd do like a quick, like a one-box break. Like, what about like choice? Mosaic choice? I don't know. Still a lot of spots left there, but I'd do it. And there's Showtime. Shohei Otani. For the Halos, that'll be for Ryan H. You got a Trout and an Otani, I think. I'll do that Prism Choice Basketball seven spots left. That's only three boxes. I can definitely do that if people want to. That one box break of Spectra Basketball, 15 teams left. Can do that. I don't know, something like that. Oh, that Spectra Soccer looks like it's sold out. So I think I'm going to be doing that. That'll, that's probably my last break of the night. Yeah, I think we're, that, that's it. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're done after that. Unless one of those choice breaks sells out. I'm down to do that. Those are super fast, so. Yeah, no, no Sean tonight. I think he'll be he'll be back tomorrow on Instagram. And Jason will be that's Instagram live at Jaspie's Breaks where we do our personals. In fact, Ted is live right now. If you want to join Ted while I'm doing this, if you're like, Joe, I'm not even in this break, but I got a, I got an itch to scratch. You can check out our personal breaks on jaspies.com. Streaming live on Instagram Live. At Jaspies Breaks on Instagram. IG Live only. You can get yourself a whole box of this if you want to. I don't know if I don't know if you have archives available, but all sorts of stuff there.
was tricky. All right. Uh, we're just we're just getting too busy, Gilo. You still have me for prime time hours. I'm always prime time hours. One to nine Pacific. Four to midnight Eastern. That's pretty much prime time. Even some late night, I guess, if you're on the East Coast. And then Sean does like the, the Conan O'Brien shift. So he'll go he'll go late night. On most nights. We're trying to trying to get a consistent seven night a week schedule going for the late nights. I think Nick is Nick is out of town doing some family stuff, so I think that's why he he wasn't available tonight. But and then Jason went live early yesterday, so he wasn't available for tonight. So yeah, I don't know. We still have to add more breakers. I feel like we have to add like one or two more breakers. We'll get full twenty four seven coverage. Full twenty four seven coverage. Seven days a week. That's the dream. And then what's the other dream? Work less, I guess. Work less. Yeah. Then maybe, maybe I could, I could just do once a week. I can just lead a team of breakers. And just kind of make snarky comments, make snarky comments in the background. Lead a team of breakers. I just kick back and relax and. Light cigars with hundred dollar bills. I would light a hundred dollar bill and light cigars and sit in the sit sit on my couch on the background right next to the Dodgers pillow. Make use of that couch. I mean, I think we're many years away from that point, but <laughs> you never know. Be like Bill Simmons on the Ringer Network, right? Just makes up podcasts. I don't know. I don't know what he really does. I guess he's like managing editor, or editor in chief of the Ringer, and kind of directs the general vibe of it. I guess the face of the organization. He just does some podcasts and talk about. I'm not retiring. I'm just saying, maybe. Uh, Maybe a, a more relaxed role, where I'm, you know, more of the face of the organization. <laughs> then Nick and I can just do podcasts and just make money off of that and become influencers instead of actually working. Ryan, Ryan, a, you should always be thinking about retiring. By the way. The day you earn your first paycheck and on, always think about retiring from the get. Babe Ruth. To 175, that goes to Aaron Tula. That was a nice one right there. It's facsimile autograph. And Kevin Bass. What's everyone's favorite Kevin Bass story? Matt DeLeo with the Astros. Old, old Kevin Bass. Not to be confused with... Uh, Kevin Moss. Remember Kevin Moss? Come on, what was that? That was really sloppy, Dodgers. Stubblefield, did, did Bellinger hit yet? Why do you need, do you have, do you have him draft, draft kings? Playing center field tonight, AJ Paul. And there's Maurizio Dubon, 18 out of 99 for my rivals, the hated ones. Giants. Matt Subblefield has the Giants. All right. Well, I'm rooting for you, Stubbs. I'm down. What kind of nickname do you think Garrett Hampson has? There's Lee Mazzelli. What's everyone's favorite Lee Mazzelli story? Armando. Armando's a Mets guy. He usually buys the Mets in our group breaks. He must have a story if he was watching live. What happened? May 26, 1964. Mets rookie Dick Smith 
collected five of his season's 21 hits in a 19-1 win over the Cubs. That's what happened. Uh, Spectra is not sold out. There's still 15 spots left in Spectra number three. But it could. That's a one-box break. If that sells out, I'll do that after the one-box soccer. Otherwise, we're done. Otherwise, we're done after this and the Spectra soccer break. And then we'll and then we'll do it. There's Mariano Rivera. Wait, what are? Matt, you got to be more specific. We have multiple Spectres on the site. Are you talking about Spectre basketball or Spectre soccer? You got to be more specific, sir. Spectre basketball? Oh, yeah. Number three is sold out. All right, so I'll do that. Okay, now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now we're done for reals. I think all the little extra breaks that I promised to do. There you go. There's the schedule, folks. So we are booked up for the night. If you want to go hang out with Jason, uh, not Jason, Jason's coming in tomorrow. If you want to go hang out with Ted Jaspi, he is live on Instagram right now. getting nervous. A lot of boxes left, right? I wouldn't get nervous until like right around here or here or here. That one or that one. Good strikeout, Caleb Ferguson. Oh, I see. Okay, you're doing the old uh, speaking into existence sort of thing. I got you. I got you. Coming in. Tie game, Kenley Jansen. I think this is the this is the only only game only game happening right now. Boba Shed. Oak, o 
Oak. Got Professor Oak up in this. Pull one of those Phil Hughes autos. Oh, yeah. Old, old, old Hughesies. Hughesies. PH. PH Balance. Has a, has a little bounty going, right? If we pull one of his autos that are inscribed. A nice Jackie Robinson mini. Right? And then, then Phil Hughes will hook you up with something, like a case of something. What team is he? Is he under? Is he as a Yankee? I feel like Twins Phil Hughes was pretty decent too, right? There's Jackie Robinson for the Dodgers. That'll be for Garza. Wow, did you drop a Ron Karkovice reference there, Jeremy Anderson? Is that old uh, White Sox catcher? Ron Karkovice with an Inside the Park Grand Slam back in 1990. I did not know that. I just know the name. Jeremy Anderson, his buddy was actually at the game. Inside of the park, Grand Slam. What happened there? Is those are were those those were the days when all the stadiums were like one big giant bowl. And it was just like 500, like 465 feet to center and 425 feet left and right. <laughs> so you misplay a ball out there. That rattles around back there. Even old Ron Karkovice could hustle around the bases and get himself a uh, inside the park home run. Oh, the ball got caught under the wall or something. All right, see that? that uh, then why wouldn't the outfielder just be like, I can't. It might have been just a ground rule double at that point if he calls the ump. If he was trying to dig that out, that's not good. There's old Lloyd McClendon. Lloyd probably remembers. Old Ron Karkovice hitting that inside the park grand slam. He probably talked about it when that happened with his team. 25 out of 99 goes to the Pirates. And it'll be for Sanford with the Buckos. I think he was here in the chat a little bit earlier. There you go. Friends forever. Red coming up out of 75. Aaron Judge. All rise. 60 out of 75. Aaron Judge. For the Yankees, Aaron. Aaron with Aaron. Aaron Tooley with Aaron Judge. You met Ron Cargovice in 94, Jeremy saying? At Milwaukee County Stadium. Right, they were all like county stadiums back then, too. The Sox are in town. Big Herd had two bombs that night. What were some other county stadiums? Fulton County Stadium in. in uh, there's Buck Showalter. Buck Showalter probably remembers all those county stadiums. He, me he remembers Fulton County Stadium. He probably remembers. The Vet, that, that was probably a county stadium. Those big round county stadiums. Just dingers. All right, three boxes to go, getting there. Getting there. There's Mr. Smile. Indians, Tyler Brenner with the tribe. All right, there's the third out. Rockies don't add a run. Kenley Jansen, the top of the ninth, taking care of business. Dodgers in the bottom of the ninth. 
Belly bomb. Belly bomb. Walk it off. I know, right, Gilo? They've, they've been hitting grand slams all week. Padres. I got some trivia for you. So there's home plate right there. In the National League, there are only three ballparks where home plate faces Northwest. Don't look it up, what are those teams? Northwest, that's wild, that's crazy. Most ballparks go this way. Sometimes they just point straight south. Maybe sometimes directly west, but Northwest is just crazy. Having home plate face that way, think about it. Sun, light, all sorts of stuff, wacky. What three NL ballparks currently have home plate shooting northwest towards Seattle. We'll go AL bar ballparks in the next box maybe. Don't look it up. Most ballpark orientations are between the south and the southwest. San Diego Padres, no. San Diego Padres point straight south. Diamondbacks, no. Diamondbacks points straight directly south. Home plate goes that way, directly south towards Mexico. Miami, no. Pittsburgh, no. Colorado, no. Reds, no. Colorado, no. Oh, no, actually, Tyler, you got one of them. Tyler got Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is one. No, Jared Street got the Reds, too. Sorry. Tyler Brenner got Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Remember, the river is this way, and the bridge is right here. Pittsburgh points straight northwest. Reds, Great America Ballpark, I think maybe a river in the way as well. Points straight northwest. Home plate. Wow, but did Bellinger do it? Wow, Matthew Stubblefield. Cody Bellinger hit a solo shot. That's a walk-off. Stubblefield called it. He he kind of acted like he kind of acted like he didn't hit it home. He didn't hit it out. He was a little confused. Some socially distant celebrating there. Wait, why is he shrugging his shoulder? I kind of missed that. I thought be a, there'd be a little more at bat than that. Yeah, it's the Cincinnati Great America Ballpark. Points northwest. Brewers point northwest, and Pirates point northwest. Wow. He destroyed that. He didn't know where it went. That's why he wasn't running. He thought he popped it up. He lost it. Oh, maybe he thought the right fielder caught it? Ah, oh, just out of reach. Yeah, those are the, those are the only three parks. Every other park go, is is between is between directly south or directly west. Most are southwest. Kind of an interesting question, right? Yeah, no Milwaukee. I don't know, maybe back in the day, but today Milwaukee Oh, no, you're right. There's a fourth. 
My bad. You're right, Milwaukee is one of them. So it's Cincinnati, it's Milwaukee, it's Pittsburgh. It's weird. It's just weird that they point that way. I'm kind of trying to do two things at once. We'll go AL in the next box. To 175, Jonathan Villar. This is also, don't look it up, don't cheat, but it's uh, according to baseballalmanac.com. I think I originally read this in a Fangraphs article a while back, and I was like, what? Out of 25, Mike Pagliarulo. Kind of a poor man Don Mattingly, right? The, the eye black and the mustache. You know the reason why they call left-handed pitchers southpaws? Because the way the diamonds were naturally oriented because of the sun and whatnot. Um, their arms would be, their left arm would be pointing south. From the, when they're standing on the mound. Southpaws. Cody Bellinger, hilarious. He thought he hit the home run out to right field. He thought it went to left center. And then he didn't then he saw the right fielder move. Then he didn't know if he caught it or not. He's he's all discombobulated. Bellinger kind of started the season off a little slow, kind of tweaked his swing a little bit, but it looks like over the last couple of weeks he was Good Mario Party celebration reference, Cody Bellinger. And there's Lucas Giolito with the cornfield bottom right there. Nice. Lucas Giolito, he was very close to Bustville, ladies and gentlemen. He was a number one prospect for the Nationals forever. And everyone was just like, when's he going to come up? And he came up and he kind of sucked on and off for a year, year and a half. And then they said, forget it. We want Adam Eaton. I think it was the Adam Eaton deal. They got Adam Eaton from the White Sox, the Nationals did, and they sent, among others, they sent away Lucas Giolito, and he kind of grinded it out in the minors and whatnot, and then now is, it was it that deal, Bryce? Yeah, Bryce is confirming it was that deal. And now, I mean, he's pitching really well. Last year, I think maybe a little, up, I mean, overall he's pitching pretty well. <laughs> Are there copyright issues here, ladies and gentlemen? Jordan Alvarez, Air Jordan? I mean, we know what they're doing, right? I think that you can put as many planes there as you want. You can put the Blue Angels up there as many times as you want. I don't know. Michael Jordan sees that. The American League. Let's go. Let's actually shrink the page so I can see all the teams at once. The American League has one, two, three teams whose home plates point this way, whose fields point this way. That is wacky. They would be called West Paws in this case if lefties were standing on the mound. Not like usual. The mounds, they're usually, ballparks are usually like this when you look at them in the sky. Right? There are three. AL ballparks, American League ballparks, where the home plate points towards Seattle. What are those teams? Ryan H. already mentioned one. 
You can now you can say it again, Ryan H. Get your answer locked in. Second to last box, ladies and gentlemen. We're almost there. Dragging a little bit, but this is my my last big break of my of my week. So that heat from earlier today really drained me, but. Wait, that wasn't the one you mentioned, Ryan H. He did he did get the other two though. Alright, Ryan H. Too quick for you guys. Yep, White Sox. Guaranteed rate field, home plate points towards Seattle. Texas, Globe Life. Is it Globe Life? Yeah, Globe Life. Also points northwest. Maybe because of the dome. And then uh, Comerica also points northwest. In fact, Comerica like, is even just slightly angled more northwest than any of the other ballparks. Which is kind of weird. Stop. No, you didn't. You did a paper on this in law school about the legality of the 1.04 rule in the baseball bylaws. I wish that was a thing. I don't know. I didn't have any. I, that was, that's all I have, Bryce. Park orientation. <laughs> <laughs> the Southpaw, where Southpaw originated. Are those Northwest stadiums all owned by banks? Wow, Matt Stubblefield, are you seeing some Illuminati S happening here? The White Sox point Northwest. They are guaranteed rate. Detroit points Northwest. That's Comerica. Is Globe Life? Globe Life's an insurance company, is it? Not a bank? Sounds like an insurance company. But that's Northwest. Let's go back to those NL parks. Northwest, Cincinnati. Great America. What's Great America? I don't know what Great America is. Is that a bank? Miller Park is Booz. It's Milwaukee. They point Northwest. PNC is a bank. Northwest. Could could be a bank thing. Great Americans Insurance. Okay. But there are also other bank parks that are not oriented northwest. So I don't know. Maybe the Illuminati thing doesn't work out. Maybe there's like maybe that's the next. Uh, here's out of twenty five. Snellzilla. I feel like Blake. You can come up with a better nickname there. Um, I feel like the next National Treasure movie with Diane Kruger and Nicolas Cage and the other third guy is going to be about the way ballparks in America are oriented. Should I write that? There's Ray Durham for Ryan H. And the White Sox. Ryan, tell me your favorite Ray Durham story. Old second baseman. I could probably tell you that I put him on my fantasy team in the early 2000s. I can tell you that. Definitely thinking that Ray Durham could hit, you know, 300 at some point. Give you a dozen home, 15 to 20 home runs as a uh, as a second baseman, which was pretty good in the early 2000s. Maybe get you 30 stolen bases. Maybe get you a 2020 season if you're lucky. Maybe that's why you draft Ray Durham. Does Ray Durham have 2,000 career hits? Yeah, 2,000. 2,054 hits. That's not bad. It's a good achievement. I think I'm I'm almost positive, ladies and gentlemen, that I missed some of these black and white parallels. I apologize about that. But our shipping... Oh, well, A, everything ships. So everything you see, you're going to get. And B, our shipping team will figure things out there and that's to 99 remember just because of the all the variations and just because it's such a big break that there are going to be naturally some delays and it's going to take us an extra day or two to get all this sorted and packed up and shipped out so all right and there's Raphael for call who was a dodger for a little bit i thought he was going to be the dodger shortstop solution for a while he was great with the braves i thought he did all right with the dodgers too 
I like Raphael for Paul. I like Raphael for a call, former Brave becoming a Dodger, a lot better than than uh, Andrew Jones. That that was traumatic. Signing Andrew Jones. There, there's that sob. Look, look, look how slim and trim he looks. Look how powerful he looks. And he goes to the Dodgers and plays like Gart. I mean, there, I guess there were some signs. He didn't have a great year the last year with the Braves. But the year before, he had 262, 41 home runs, and 129 RBIs. And then went to the Dodgers and was just injured in garbage. Same with the Rangers and the White. But it had a couple decent years with the Yankees before he hung them up. Richard, tonight wasn't your night. Oh, I didn't know the break was over. Is the break over, Richard? Luis Robert right here. Ryan H. has a crazy San Diego chicken collection. We met the San Diego chicken at the National a number of years back in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the San Diego Chicken was signing them. Trivia. <laughs> the San Diego Chicken not affiliated with the San Diego Padres. He's just from San Diego. There was some mild controversy back back in the day when the San Diego Chicken was in a was in optic baseball, Donner's optic baseball. Some people thought he should go to San Diego, but we have to explain to him that that is not that is not San Diego uh, not San Diego Padres affiliated. He just happens to be from San Diego. There's Hank Aaron with the Braves. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any more trivia at the moment. That ballpark one, I, did, I, I haven't done the ballpark one in a while. I've done that trivia before, but it's always, that's always a fun one to bring up every once in a while. All right, final box. Cro cross your fingers, everybody. Get your lucky rabbit's foot. You know, get, get your lucky horseshoe. What's the criteria for the lucky horseshoe? Does it have to be on the particular thing has to happen or is it just any horseshoe could be lucky? What? How do you dub a horseshoe lucky? So the SC chicken never, no. I mean, I'm sure the SC Chicken has appeared in San Diego games, but he's not an employee. He's not an employee of the San Diego Padres. He's an independent contractor. He may have made a lot of appearances in San Diego, perhaps. Being that 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 being his home home base. Four leaf clovers. If you got a four leaf clover, grab them. We got two autographs to go. Longest game ever? In terms of innings or in terms of like time? 
I guess maybe they're both one and the same. I mean, there could be like a 10 inning game that goes for five hours, but a brisk 24 inning game or something like that. Was a 25 inning game between the Sox and the Brewers. Which Sox? Eight hours. I mean, at the at the twentieth inning, maybe you put a man on second, do some softball rules, right? I don't mind the man on second in regular season games. I don't think they're doing them in the. I don't think they're doing them in the playoffs, which is great. But I'm okay with. I mean, studies say what? There's only ten percent of the games that actually go to go to extras anyway. Jackie Robinson to 75 for the Dodgers. And like I said, I just want to remind everybody, make sure when you get these, we'll try to catch as many of the, the variations as possible. And I know I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch, and I apologize. There's Mark Wollers for the Braves. That goes to Chris Miller. But when you get all these cards, because all cards ship, just be sure to double check the, there's all these codes on the back right here which you can match up with the variations. You can see that variation guide on cardboardconnection.com. Probably a couple other resources have it too, but that's what we use. Got a couple of quick one box breaks after this, ladies and gentlemen. And then I'm going to call it after that. All right, and we should have one more autograph to go, so fingers crossed. Is this it? No, that's just light blue Kevin Newman to 25. Is this it? It's Manny Sanguin. Our last autograph is for Sanford, Card Blaster, and the Pirates. There you go, there you go, that's what he's all about. There you go, two chips. All right, and there you have it, folks. I'm sure there's some variations here and whatnot, some short prints, some other cards. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. If you didn't get a hit, we appreciate you trying. We'll get them next time. We might have some more archives that we're posting, so if you want to run it back, keep an eye on jazbeescasebreaks.com. We appreciate everybody. I know it's not easy to hit. It's tough. But we appreciate you taking part in the thrill of the chase, because that's really what this is all about. There you go. Thank you. Here's a quick recap. So including that, uh, that out of 25 right here, here are our autographs and some Luis Roberts. Nice Jackie Robinson mini. There are a couple other, maybe one other mini there too. All those Luis Roberts add up. And some old school guy. Nice John Means right here. And we started off with old Darren Erstead, who I learned was a punter in college as well. Who knew? There you go. I guess some of you did. Ten box pick your team number four, 2020 Tops Archives Baseball in the books. Thanks very much, everybody. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.